So nutrition is basically the building blocks for the brain. So you need nutrients, micronutrients to be able to um, to make all of the cells and myelination and all the different um, aspects and neurotransmitters in the brain. You also need nutrients, especially um, energy, to be able to function. So um, the brain needs a lot of energy to be able to process information, to be able to create um, connections between two neurons. Um, and things like um, energy require not only glucose, but you also need iron to be able to process that glucose into a form of energy that the brain can use. So if you don't have the right micronutrients at the right time, your brain doesn't develop. Um, it's hard to say whether or not the brain's the first priority. There's some evidence to, to suggest that the brain is um, somewhat protected if there's a small amount of deficiency, but definitely there is a lot of competition between the brain and the rest of the body. During that early developmental period, um, the brain is not only growing rapidly, but so is the rest of the body. So an infant between zero and 24 months of age um, usually triples their body weight as well as their brain growing quickly. So this places a huge demand on their nutritional requirements. Um, and it's, it's um, hard to say if there's a severe level of deficiency, whether or not um, the brain can be, it doesn't seem like the brain can be, you know, protected if it's, um, you know, to say iron deficiency, anemia or malnutrition, of course, there's gonna be effect on both the body and the brain. Um, for observational studies, there's a lot to show that uh, children with nutritional deficiencies during the infancy period um, have poorer developmental outcomes than who, who, children who don't have nutritional deficiencies. Um, but in terms of trials that are intervening in that period to try and improve, um, I guess, nutritional intake, uh, the, the results have been really, really mixed as to whether or not they can improve child development as well. Um, there are some studies that show um, that there are some benefits, but there are also plenty of studies to show that there's been really no effect of the supplementation. So at the moment, it's too early to tell whether or not you can improve child development outcomes through a nutritional supplementation during the complementary feeding period. Definitely. So there's um, methodological issues to suggest that the children aren't necessarily getting all of the nutritional supplement that's being prescribed. There's um, a lot of differences between um, the groups where the tests that are used to assess developmental outcomes are, uh, are made. So a lot of them are, are developed and standardised in uh, well-nourished developed countries such as in the US and then they're taken into um, remote rural communities in developing countries like Peru and um, uh, tr and used in those sorts of populations where it's not just um, comparing or translating it into a different language, it's also just a totally different um, environmental and cultural upbringing that the child has. So there are all sorts of issues um, with this research at the moment as to whether or not we can detect a difference in um, child development from nutrition because of the assessments we use um, and other issue metho methodological limitations with the studies as well. The optimist in me says yes one day, um, whether or not it, that will be put into practice remains to be seen, um, but there's definitely a lot of work that needs to happen to even be able to design the optimal trial to work out whether or not there's a benefit of supplementation. <music>